What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer. And in today's episode, this one's going to be very different. I'm actually going to be covering all of the base sniper rifles in the same video. And the reason I wanted to do this instead of doing them individually is sniper rifles compared to other guns are actually fairly basic stat wise. There's not a whole lot of really important stats to cover. Also, when looking at sniper rifles, they don't really compare to the other guns. They only really compare properly to each other. And therefore, to me, it just makes sense to put them all together so you can see them side by side. So starting it off, as always, let's have a look at our damage. And all of the sniper rifles actually have the same base damage at 110, but the true power comes from the multipliers, which are what allow us to get our one-shot kills. And you can see all of the damage values for the different areas of the bodies for each of the guns. So if you want to take a close look at that, feel free to pause this. But really what most of us are looking for is just the one shot kill area. Which, as you can see, the Pellington and M82 are the same here. We can only get a one shot kill to the upper torso, neck, or head. Whereas with the Tundra, we can also get a one shot kill to the upper arms. Additionally, I wanted to point out with all of these guns, the final barrel unlock is the Tiger Team barrel, and this one increases our damage by 20%, so we now get a base damage of 132, and this is what it does to our one-shot kill areas. With the Pellington and the M82, our one-shot kill area extends to the upper arms as well, and then with the Tundra, our one-shot kill area extends to the mid-torso as well as the rest of the arm and hands. So out of the three, the Tundra is the clear winner when it comes to one-shot kill areas. Now let's move on to our rate of fire. With the Pellington, our rate of fire is 54 rounds per minute. The Tundra is a little bit slower at 47 rounds per minute. And then the M82 is semi-automatic and therefore has a significantly higher fire rate at 180 rounds per minute. Then taking a look at our bullet velocity, it's actually quite low. You would expect sniper rifles to have a high bullet velocity if we were thinking about this in realistic terms. However, for the sake of gameplay balance, they decided to go quite low with the bullet velocity, and it ranges between 500 to 550 meters per second. After that, one of the most important stats for a sniper rifle is the aim down sight time. Because effectively speaking, if you're not already aimed down sight, your aim down sight time with a sniper rifle is your time to kill potential. And the Pellington is the fastest here at 550 milliseconds, followed by the Tundra at 650 milliseconds, and then finally the slowest is the M82 at 700 milliseconds, which is extremely slow. Then let's take a look at sprint out times. They're really not all that important with sniper rifles because you generally don't want to be hip firing with these things. And since your aim down sight time is significantly longer than your sprint out time, it's not something that even comes into the equation if you're aiming down sight before firing. But you can see here, even though in game they're stated as having the same sprint out time, it turns out the Pellington and the M82 are noticeably faster than the Tundra in this area. Next up, an important stat for sniper rifles that I wouldn't normally cover with the other guns is how long does it take you to swap to a pistol? This is something you're likely to do very often with a sniper rifle compared to other guns, so if you miss your shot, oftentimes the best thing for you to do is quickly swap to your pistol. And it turns out all of them are exactly the same. The time it takes to swap to a 1911 from any one of these sniper rifles is 517 milliseconds. Moving on, let's have a look at our hip fire spread, which is actually the same for all of the sniper rifles, and it is absolutely terrible. It is by far the worst hip fire spread you'll find in the game. And this is really no surprise at all, unless you're in an extremely desperate point blank situation or unless you're trying to go for a cool clip or something like that, you should never be hip firing with these guns. Now, I was going to cover ranges here because if you look at the in-game stated stats, all of the sniper rifles appear to have a range drop off point at 127 meters. However, I did put this to the test and it turns out there's actually no range drop off point at all. So I don't know why they use that particular value instead of just putting like an infinity symbol there. But I tested on the longest line of sight I could find in a multiplayer map and I couldn't find a point where your damage will drop off. But next up, this leads us into the base optics. This is something that's important with sniper rifles. What do the base optics look like? And it turns out with all of these optics, they actually have the exact same zoom level. So that's going to be equal across the board here. The main thing I want to focus on is the viewing window that you have while aiming down sight. And first up with the Pellington, this does give us the widest viewing angle, which you can see labeled in green there. Then this is followed by the Tundra, which has a very slightly smaller viewing window. It's really not that much of a difference, but there is a slight difference there. And then finally, the one with the smallest viewing window while aiming down sight is the M82. But again, it's really not a significant difference. It's probably not going to change the outcome of very many situations, but I thought it was interesting to at least point this out. 
While we're on the topic of scopes, I think this is a good time to point out the idle sway differences because the in-game stated idle sway is the same across all of these sniper rifles, and that's just not accurate at all. When we have a look at them side by side by side here, starting from left to right, you can see the Pellington has the most idle sway. You'll see that my reticle is often swaying completely off the character model. Whereas with the Tundra, it's mainly on the torso. There's just a few situations where it will very slightly come off the character model. And then finally, the M82 has the best idle sway out of all of these. And this one isn't even close to leaving the character model while aiming down sight. So yeah, this one's a pretty big takeaway in my opinion. I expected these to actually be accurate and be the same, but it turns out that's not even close to being the case. Next up, let's have a look at our reload ad times with all of the magazine attachments for each of these guns individually. The first one is by far the most complicated. The Pellington doesn't have a detachable magazine. Even when you put an attachment on that looks like a detachable magazine, you don't load it that way. No matter which attachment you're using, you will load each round individually in the Pellington. And the way this reload time works is the first value is how long it takes to load the first round. And then the second value is how long it takes you to load each individual round after the first one. Because the first one is going to take longer because you have that initial animation of opening up the bolt. But yeah, you can see with the Pellington, if you're reloading from empty, it's going to take an extremely long time. But one of the benefits is you can just quickly pop in a round or two, unlike the other sniper rifles, where every time you reload, you're reloading the entire magazine. So yeah, the Pellington is quite unique, but when we move into the Tundra, you can see our reload ad time is 2.27 seconds. And of course, feel free to pause on any of these if you want to get all the information out of that. But finally, we have the M82, which is just a little bit slower than the Tundra at 2.35 seconds. And finally, for the base stats on these guns, let's have a look at our movement speeds, which are actually identical across all three of these sniper rifles. And our base movement speed is 95%, which is equal to assault rifles. Our sprint movement speed is 141%, which is very respectable. However, our aim down sight movement speed is extremely slow at just 30%. And that finally wraps it up for the stats of these sniper rifles. Instead of taking a look at strengths and weaknesses like I normally would, instead, I just wanted to share my thoughts on each of these individual guns before we get into my recommended attachment setups. Essentially, if you're going for the fastest possible aim down sight time, if you're really trying to quick scope people as fast as possible, you're probably gonna wanna go with the Pellington. However, the Tundra is also still very viable at quick scoping, and you're gonna get fewer hit markers with it because a shoulder shot won't be a hit marker. So this is why the Tundra tends to be a more popular choice than the Pellington. It's just a little bit more versatile and forgiving. As for the M82, this one is terrible in my opinion, the way they've got it balanced currently. Everything with it just feels wrong. Based on the looks and the caliber and just the way it sort of feels in your hand in game, it feels like it should be that extremely powerful sniper rifle where you can shoot somebody anywhere in the torso and you're going to immediately destroy them. Instead, you have to actually be very precise with this if you want that one-shot kill, and I wouldn't recommend going for two-shot kills, because by the time you aim down sight and fire the first shot, you're usually going to be dead before you have time for a second shot. So this one is just balanced in a really strange way. I would say they should either significantly improve our aim down sight time with this gun, or they should improve the one-hit kill potential with it. As it is right now, I just don't consider it to be a decent gun. And with that, it's time to finally move into my favorite attachment combinations for each one of these sniper rifles. And keep in mind, they're going to be very similar across the board here because I generally have the same goal no matter which sniper rifle I'm using. I want to kit it out to minimize the weaknesses and maximize the strengths. So let's kick it off with my best attachment combination for the Pellington. With this, we got the stabilizer to improve our idle sway. So this means in many situations, I don't even need to hold my breath at all. Then we've got that Tiger Team Barrel. This one just helps in so many ways. There's really no reason to not be using this, assuming you've got it unlocked, because it not only improves your reload time, it improves your damage, your fire rate, and your bullet velocity. This one is just a no-brainer. Again, assuming you have it unlocked. It is unlocked fairly late. But after that, we've got the Steady Aim Laser, and this is just so that when you do end up in those desperate point-blank situations, you've actually got a pretty decent chance of getting that one-shot kill still with a hip-fire shot. After that, we've got the seven round magazine, which actually turns into a six round magazine when combined with the Tiger Team barrel. But I like this one just because it doesn't hurt my aim down sight time at all, and it gives me a couple extra rounds in the mag. And finally, this just leaves us with the Airborne Elastic Wrap, which is the attachment that helps the most with our aim down sight time. Again, this is an absolute must have for this gun, assuming you've got it unlocked. 
And you can see with this build, we have a slightly increased fire rate. Our bullet velocity is also improved over the base bullet velocity, although it's still not amazing at 750 meters per second. Our reload time is slightly improved by that Tiger Team barrel, but then also hurt by the seven round magazine, which just kind of cancels it out. Then we've got a pretty decent aim down sight time for a sniper rifle, at least at 484 milliseconds. This build right here is, in my opinion, the best all-around sniper build that you can make with the Pellington. This thing's going to be excellent for quickscoping and also great for picking people off at long ranges. As for the Tundra, my best build for this is actually identical to my best build for the Pellington. And there's a very simple reason for that. This is simply the best attachment combination you can use for an all-around sniper build. Now, if you did want to make some adjustments to your attachments here, you could perhaps drop the steady aim laser for something else, like maybe a grip that allows you to sprint faster or something. That one is really up to you, but for pretty much everything else, it's simply the best choice for an all-around sniper build. And you can see with this one, once again, our rate of fire is improved from the base. Our bullet velocity is not so bad at 825 meters per second. Reload time is not great, but that doesn't really matter all that much. And our aim down sight time is 572 milliseconds, which isn't quite as good as the Pellington build, but the thing about this particular build is it's a one-hit kill anywhere in the upper torso or arms. And therefore, this is just going to be much more consistent than my Pellington build. But finally, this leaves us with the M82, and this one is just very slightly different from the others. With this, we once again have the Stabilizer and the Tiger Team Barrel. Those ones are just great attachments for these guns. However, my third attachment is going to be a bit different here. This is the bipod, and the reason for this is it reduces your vertical and horizontal recoil, which for the bolt-action guns, that doesn't really matter all that much. But since this is a semi-auto and you sometimes want to be getting that follow-up shot while still being aimed down sight, this attachment is actually going to help you quite a bit with those follow-up shots. But after that, the rest is still going to be the same as the others. We got the 7-round mag and the airborne elastic wrap. And with this particular one, we got a pretty solid rate of fire at 212 rounds per minute. Bullet velocity is not so bad at 787 meters per second. Reload add time's a bit on the slow side, and our aim down sight time is still quite slow, but this is as good as it gets when it comes to aim down sight time at 616 milliseconds. Now with this gun, I'd say there's a bit more room for play. Like for a lot of people, they might not like the default scope with this gun, and I could definitely see a solid argument for using a lower zoom optic, for instance. But for me, I don't really like sacrificing any of the other attachments, and therefore I just stick with the default optic most of the time. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's gun guide on all of the sniper rifles that launched with the game. As always, I want to hear from you guys in the comments section below. Out of these three sniper rifles, which one is your favorite? And let me know why as well, I'm really curious to see that. Also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I have now covered all of the primary weapons that are currently in the game. I will leave a link to the playlist in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.